the Ark at Saga. My name is Elkan Wiesma and today, finally, finally, I'm going to talk about the uh, fertilizers that I use for my orchids. And I wanted to do this uh, video for a very long time, but I didn't have the time to film it because um, I want to go over them uh, as good as I can, so I can do it uh, quick and I really need the time to make this because I want to explain my thoughts about it and why I use a product. Uh, so that uh, takes up some time. Uh, just in a nutshell, uh, if you don't already know, we have a bird shelter and we are open seven days a week from 9 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so therefore there always has to be someone here uh, for in case if people uh, come bring uh, some animals that need our help. Um, but today my husband is home and he uh, did uh, volunteer to uh, yeah, uh, babysit basically uh, the uh, bird shelter, so I can uh, film this. Um, so I thought, yes, now I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to film this uh, video. Like I said, it may take some time to explain the products. Because you can already see uh, the products that I used uh, displayed here in front of me. And I want to go over them uh, one by one. Um, I think that's very important. And also, I did a, a nice, uh, I tried to make a nice setup. Uh, once again using a Miltoniopsis. To be honest, my uh, greenhouse, I'm also working on my uh, video where I do the pest uh, control and I uh, sprayed them just uh, recently, so therefore my greenhouse is not looking very beautiful. So I thought I'd do this in the inside of the, the orchid room. Um, just before we go and over the products one by one, I just wanted to explain uh, how I grow my orchids. I think it's very important so you get you get a better understanding why I use these products in front of me. Uh, it may sound a little bit strange because uh, as you know probably I grow uh, most of my orchids in cell watering pots but I try to mimic uh, nature as much as I can and I refer to um, basically the concept of the orchids that uh, yeah, basically are growing in nature that get their feet um, daily, on a daily basis, but in very small um, amounts. Um, so that is what I try to mimic and I can do that the best in my case, in my situation, by growing them in self-watering. Also, I am a person that likes to overwater, that I not really like to overwater, but I overwater. So therefore I came up um, uh, not, I not, not personally came up with, with the cell watering, of course, but well, um, of, uh, I did came up with the uh, customized uh, cell watering um, that I have going on here, and I have a video about it. If you don't forget, I will put a link in. Um, but basically, what I'm referring to by copying it, um, how they grow in nature, is that I like to have uh, in my reservoir, in, in the pots, the orchids are standing in a reservoir. Um, I like to have basically everything in that reservoir, what's in front of me, in small amounts. So I try to give my orchids the opportunity to take what they need. And I think that's very important. And that is what I think they get in nature. And uh, that's probably the reason why a orchid chose to grow on that three, because it did, uh, does get what it needs, etc. So I try to, uh, like I said, to mimic that by uh, basically creating a uh, buffet uh, in my reservoir. And I'm not trying to overdo it. I always keep my reservoirs underneath 200 parts per million. Uh, but the parts per million are, uh, who are in my reservoir are basically these products. Uh, small amounts, so basically it's weekly, weekly. Um, I water them every week, sometimes twice a week, because they like to, really like to drink, especially in the, in the growing season, in the blooming season. Um, but uh, like I said, I, uh, I give them uh, these products. I think um, this is very important to know before, we, before I start to talk about the product. This is the, um, my thinking proce process behind the products. So uh, that said and done, I will now have a close-up uh, look uh, about the products and go over them. One by one. So I start with the base of the feeding schedule that I have going on and that is uh, the fertilizer from repotme.com. Uh, I did buy this, I, uh, as you may know, I'm from the Netherlands, so I'm from Europe. It's, it's, I can buy this from America, but it's kind of hard. 
so therefore I will start with it I will change this uh, into a rain mix but the rain mix is basically basically the same as uh, this product this fertilizer from repotme.com so I don't think there will be a lot of change there but uh, it's the only big change for me is that I can get it easily way easier than this one but this is uh, like I said from repotme.com I'm sorry for the glare try to avoid it um, and as you can see the color is, is it's really uh, not how it looked uh, when I bought it it's basically one mess so I need to change this um, this is also I think already two years old so it's a little bit on the old side I still use it but I uh, should uh, change it and I will I will uh, change it soon but I there's a lot of, still in there so I don't didn't like to um, to waste it but I now have a few other house plants that I will give this but anyhow uh, a base first uh, fertilizer based fertilizer um, by that I mean it basically have everything in it what our organs need to grow and to bloom so that's a nice way to start out and for me uh, I bought this product because I heard a lot of uh, good uh, um, uh, reviews about it on YouTube so therefore I thought I need to have a very nice base to start from so this is, uh, I think, uh, it's if you want to have a fertilizer which have, has everything in it um, to let your orchids bloom very well and let, uh, let them grow very well. So, but as you saw in the intro, I have a lot of different products. I will move this aside and put one um, next to it so we can talk about uh, them. Because I wanted to introduce more products because I like to... Um, try to get the best out of my plants so the best blooming the best growth and therefore I need some more uh, stuff um, going in there um, yeah, it's not not only fertilizer but also some hormones um, but for example let's uh, which one do we grab this one calcium this is my calcium nitrate I have a I'm sorry again for the glare uh, so this really little white grains of uh, calcium uh, calcium nitrate so this is my biggest calcium source that I have and I also have this one it's called Calmac from from BioBiz. BioBiz is is basically my favorite uh, brand out there I really really love using their products I see a lot of different especially when I started using this one on my uh, Orchids and especially on, uh, for example, family abscesses, that the leaves get uh, really strong and thicker uh, within a few weeks, I think three, four weeks after I start using this one. This one is fairly new for me, but um, I, I use this uh, for the nitrogen. We now are in the growing season, so therefore I like to have a little bit more nitrogen in there. And before I had these, uh, this product of nitrogen, uh, this one. I also used a 20-20-20 solution of fertilizer. I like to, to uh, mix them. So once I use this, the other time I will use this. Next time I will use the Calmac, etc. Uh, once again, I like to have a, a buffet of different products. So I don't like to use every single time the same product. I like to use a little bit of everything. But um, a calcium um, is very important uh, for, uh, for the orchids to grow um, and uh, also the magnesium. I did use Epsom salts, here we are Epsom salts, so I will put it next to it, but you hear me say I did use it. I have it still around, but I see a lot of, um, quite a lot of magnesium also in the products as well. You don't want to overdo it. If you, uh, it's, it's that's for um, it's, it's basically for every product you don't want to overdo it but also with the Epsom salt if you have too much magnesium it can uh, make it very hard for the orchids to pick up other nutrients therefore I stopped using the Epsom salt because uh, like I said I have already quite some magnesium in my uh, fertilizing uh, regime um, with uh, because the other products hold it as well but just in case if I have a deficiency uh, on kels, uh, I'm sorry, on magnesium, I have some Epsom salts in there. So these products, I, uh, yeah, I, on occasion use these two together. Most of the times I use this one or this one, 
and sometimes I like to add a little bit of Calmac in it. Uh, the calcium nitrate I use it uh, on its own. Uh, once again I don't use every product at once, that would be a little bit too much, but um, small amounts. Uh, let me see, what do we have more? I have this product. I'm not doing them in a specific order, but just want to go over them briefly. This is a, uh, as you can see, it's a Mycore Hydro. And a very uh, different word for me to pronounce, but basically this, whole, this one holds some beautiful hormones in it. Uh, growing hormones and humic, humic acids and vitamins, plant growing hormones and trace elements. This is not necessarily a fertilizer. It's actually it isn't a fertilizer, but it helps growing the argus to get them happy and uh, um, like I said, to keep them, uh, of just to start them growing. And we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see the products a little bit better. But um, that one I only use, um, let's say, four to six months. Just a little amount to this this bag will uh, last me a, uh, quite some years, probably a lifetime. I just use a little bit of it. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I like to give them some extra because they are once again growing are in inorganic media and therefore I like to add some stuff in the, there. Um, but if you want to know more about this product you really should look it up. So therefore I'm holding it a little bit closer. You have the time to uh, read it down, uh, write it down, I'm sorry. Uh, if you want to, but this is uh, something that I like. It also um, holds, uh, as we saw, uh, growing hormones. That's nice, but to be honest, I, uh, for growing hormones, I like to use this one. Once again, from Biobis, Alga Mic, and it's basically the uh, algae, the kelp. Uh, yeah, it's not basically fertilizer, but uh, the hormones, the growing hormones. And uh, so, these one go very close. The, uh, this one holds some traits of this product, but this one doesn't hold everything this one holds, if that makes sense. But I use this one more just to uh, get uh, my orchids growing, especially when I have new orchids. And it really helps, in, in my opinion, to uh, have a um, not a big response on a transport uh, port shock or a reporting shock. And this one helps them to get growing, to start growing roots quite quickly. So therefore, uh, I like to use the seaweed. That was the word I was looking for, the seaweed solution, kelp solution. Um, if I'm correct, it's basically the same. But this is uh, from seaweed uh, extracts. Then, once again, I like to mix it up. This is a product that I don't use much, but on occasion. Fish mix. Once again, Biobix. <laughs> Biobis. Uh, let me put it here. Is that still in frame? Where? Um, I can put it here actually. The fish mix is also basically a complete fertilizer, so therefore it's very close to these two guys. But once again, I like to mix it up because, like people, I think a plant is not the same. Every plant is different, even though you might have the same Miltoniopsis. Uh, I think. Some might like the fish mix a bit better, some might like the MSU a little bit better, some the 2020, etc. So therefore, once again, I like to create a, a buffet in that reservoir uh, for my orchids. So therefore, I like to change this. But the fish mix I use uh, once every two to three months. So a little bit, um, because I think it's a great product, but it's, uh, it might be a little bit strong. So therefore, I use it uh, not that often, but once again, uh, I like to mix things up. If I look uh, um, at myself when I'm eating, I don't like to eat every every day the same stuff. So therefore, I like to change it up as well. So I think maybe my plants <laughs> like to uh, change their buffet uh, also um, sometimes. Um, this product we talked about, it had some humic excess, if I pronounce it correctly. Basically, it's uh, this stuff. So I have that in a bottle as well. And also the Bio Heaven from Biobis contains that as well in their uh, mixture. Let me see, let me have a quiet. You can, I didn't know this, but you can open this and then you have 
uh, basically the description of what is in there uh, if I can read it in a language that I understand <laughs> I'm sorry here it is some nitrogen some uh, ammonium that's not really great if you are uh, working uh, with inorganic media I love the nitrate nitrogen the nitrate we did talk about earlier that's why I bought this not that long ago the ammonia needs a, a little process um, it has to go through a little process before the plants can take it uh, the nitrate is already uptakeable for the plants but anyhow it's not a big amount uh, some nitrate there nitrate is uh, directly available for the plants so that's something to um, to remember if you especially when you grow in self-watering or semi hydroponics and it has some zinc some iron so it's quite it holds quite a lot of uh, good stuff here so I like to once again mix this up uh, on occasion it's a small bottle but I do not uh, use it uh, as, as much little amounts so it will take me about uh, I think two years at least to finish this bottle but um, it ho also holds a, a, a humic axis uh, how do we call it yeah humic ex exits so these three let me zoom out a little bit because the products are taking up a little bit more room but these three are very close together by that I mean that I change these as well well actually this one uh, holds uh, more um, hormones as well so I only use this once every uh, half year I think um, but these two I uh, did do chains uh, quite often and I use these once every two months I think so to give you a idea I probably should make a fertilizer schedule but um, it's not always the same but if you want want me to do that please let me know in the comment section below I would really be happy to, to make that to give you an indication because I now um, now I'm talking about the project I, I uh, noticed that I have some troubles to explaining uh, everything how I use it because there's so many uh, so many projects here and they all have a different purpose but I hope I explained it uh, as well as I, uh, I can uh, at least as you understand and I did watch a video from BioBase about the bio heaven and they did explain that you could think of the humic um, and the bio heaven uh, as a product that basically um, yeah, it goes around the fertilizer, the, the stuff from the fertilizer. It's, it's basically coating it and make it uh, a little bit more tastefuller for the plants. So if uh, a plant uh, do, uh, yeah, doesn't really like, let's say, uh, the iron, this may take it, uh, make it a little bit more uh, tasteful for the plant, so it uh, will take up the iron a bit better. That's the, their explanation. It's not mine. Um, I really don't know if it really works like that um, I'm just a, uh, s a simple grower <laughs> and I try to do my thing it's not a, I try to think about stuff and oh, basically uh, on feeling actually if, I, if something feels right or it does make sense then I start using it but I uh, try to think it through so making a reservoir with uh, different amounts of these products makes sense for me because in nature they will get small amounts basically every day of different different yeah basically not, not the products but different ingredients that um, these products uh, has as well so that's how I try to copy and that's how I try to um, think about my fertilizer and my hormones if they do make sense and for that, uh, this is a very uh, also a new one. It's called, as you can see, the Activera, also from Biobis. It's a product. It's based on uh, the Activ. Uh, here it is. The Activera. It's uh, based on the Aloe Vera plant. There it was. I always forget the name of it. I don't know why, but uh, and this product is called uh, Activera because they try to use the the they they uh, not try. They use the benefits of the Aloe Vera plant. As you may know, it can be very healing if you have wounds on your fingers, etc. Um, so therefore, it, they use it. I think it, it really helps if you have some wound, wounds on uh, on your uh, roots, for example, of the orchid. But what it also does, and that interests uh, me more, uh, to be honest, is that it uh, 
they explained in their video that it, um, when, for example, you have a rotting root in your pot, this uh, activera, uh, the bacteria in it, um, yeah, basically eats the rot and turns it into sugars, and those sugars are obtainable uh, for the plants again. So basically, the rotting process, uh, I try to make it obtainable with this product again for my orchids. I think that's a nice cycle, if you get my thinking process. If it's, I'm not sure if it's working because I'm uh, having this product now for let's say about five, six months. I do not see much difference, but maybe, maybe I don't know, but maybe I will in the future see some uh, only the the actual roots in the pots without uh, the velamen. Uh, and if the velamen is gone maybe that's a sign that this project is working, that the, the, that the development started um, getting back into sugars again uh, and obtainable for our plants. That's the only thing I can think of uh, when I can say, yeah, I see difference there, but because I don't flush or I don't flush um, the development out, so it's, if it's gone, it probably is because this uh, Activera takes care of it. That's Ho that's what I'm hoping, <laughs> but I uh, just being honest, uh, it's not a product that I used uh, for that long, so I'm not completely sure. But it's a, I think it's a nice product, uh, and I like that. I really, uh, I, I really like to uh, use different products once again if they make sense, just my logical sense. I'm just a simple grower, nothing more. But um, therefore, I on occasion uh, introduce a new uh, brand, a new substance basically for my orchids. This is what I have for the last at least six months. Most of them are even longer than that and they work. I do have uh, great results with my plants so I will stick with this and uh, basically what I'm trying to say is never change a winning team. There are so many beautiful projects out there, there are so many beautiful stories about the projects. If they are uh, completed through that's another question. I don't think they always are, but um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to know when a project is really working. I think a a, re, a, a reliable source is when uh, a uh, orchid grower is growing uh, using it for quite a long time, and they can try or they at least can explain as much as they can about the product and why they use it. So you can see for yourself if it will fit. And once again in your climate, but don't forget the climate, uh, because if you do that, if you have a cold climate, you can fertilize what you want, too cold, let me say, uh, let me say that uh, uh, better. If it's too cold for your orchid, so it isn't happy, you can feed it everything you want, but it will not be happy because it's a, it's, it, it's a lack in climate, if I'm pronouncing that right. If your orchid is happy, it has a right temperature around it, it has a, the right uh, light levels, uh, etc. The uh, uh, right amount of water, just only water. I think we do forget that too often, but a plant basically needs water. These are all extras, but uh, water is the, the most important thing, probably, in a nicely balanced uh, temperature range and uh, light levels. If we all have that going on, the plant will start to bloom, start to grow, and then it might be, may benefit from all these products. But only once again if the plant is happy. If you have an unhappy plant for whatever reason, you basically can stop fertilizing it because it will not uptake it. You need to have it in a happy mode. The only product that I really would recommend then is the Alga Mic. Uh, I'm referring to a plant, for example, that uh, doesn't want to grow roots or hasn't any roots, etc. It's not really happy because the happiness, I think, starts inside the pot. It needs to uptake everything that's in there and then it will shoot out new shoots, blooms, etc. And to make uh, that process starting again, I really would recommend the Algamic or a kelp solution or a seaweed solution, basically. Once again, I just like this brand. But yeah, I think that makes sense. I hope this story um, does make sense as well. It's, I, I found it very hard to explain because I have many projects, products, uh, as you can see, quite, 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 quite many, I think. But uh, once again, I like to try them out and I have quite a 
good result. So I think there is uh, something to say about every product I have here. And yes, I'm holding another one. Okay, this you may have seen this on, on uh, some uh, videos already, but this um, is a uh, basically a. It's not really a fertilizer. I'm trying to open the the container. Urgh. There it is. So it's a dusty solution of uh, calcium and magnesium. Basically, that, those two are the main ingredients. I use this because I don't flush my pots, and because I don't flush them, I have uh, my pH reading go down quite quickly uh, and quite rapidly. Yeah, that's basically the same. I'm sorry, quite quite a, a lot of amount, I should say, around four pH. Uh, readings uh, uh, below four that's basically what I'm trying to say is uh, not um, that uncommon if you don't flush so therefore I need a product that brings up the pH again and this I found this one and I did came across a uh, yeah it was basically garden line uh, in one of uh, Rick L's videos and also uh, from Todd Tropicals both of them uh, did and do use uh, that that calcium that uh, Gordon lime we don't have Gordon lime here in Europe as far as I know but this one is basically uh, has the same purpose and um, so therefore I started using this product and it really works I use it for a pH uh, balancing balancing product um, by that I mean I uh, like to have the pH around seven in my pots. So I can fertilize with some of these products on a pH level of 6 to 6.3. That's my, uh, my go-to basically for the pH readings. I don't like to go underneath that or above that. Uh, 6, sometimes 5.8, 5.9, 5 but once again I like 6 to 6.3. Um, so I fertilize it at that uh, pH level and because I have that calcium in here I sort of mimic the system uh, because inorganic media in the beginning has the tendency and I think when you do flush on uh, on a regular schedule to bring that pH up but if you don't flush it will bring it down like I said and therefore I need a solution so I, this one will bring it up uh, to 7 and my fertilized water goes in around 6 to 6.3 and then over the next few days it will climb up again because we have this product in that reservoir. This circle of uh, watering is holding on for about three months and then I have to, most of the times I have to give them another uh, pinch, not much, a little pinch of this product again in the reservoir and that is why I uh, do my measurements. That's a whole different story but it's very important because uh, that's why I briefly talk about it now because as you might know you can feed whatever you want but a plant needs it at a certain pH to be able to uptake it so therefore I like to give them a range between basically uh, 5.8 to 7 is basically what I'm trying to say or 6 to 7, 7.5 and I have some uh, some fish mix on my fingers I can see that's <laughs> I'm sorry that's the brown spot but it as you can see, it's a little bit on the bottle there. Apparently, I have it on my hands. It doesn't matter. It's a, a bio product. But anyhow, so um, I try to give them everything in that reservoir and also a different pH levels during basically a week. Then I start watering again. So I start at 6.0, 6 let's say, and the end of the week, it's around 7 because of that calcium. And then we go back to 6 and I introduce some new fertilizing, some new hormones in the pot and we go through that next week and we start again. I hope this makes sense. Once again there are many uh, things to talk about. I try to talk about them briefly. I cannot go over them too long. This video would be way too long. But um, this is basically my fertilizing schedule. This is uh, at least the product that I use, I should say. Um, I'm thinking of making a sort of schedule. Uh, once again, if you really would like to know that schedule, please leave them in the comments. Um, I would be happy to make it, to give you a, a more better idea of how much I give them and when. 
So this is uh, basically it for now. This is uh, these are the projects that I'm currently working with, with I, which I really like. Um, I will try to put some links in in the video description. There will be some European European links and some Dutch links because this is a Dutch project. So, um, but it is the project that I use. So if you wanted to know more about it, you maybe can use a translator or at least get an idea of the product itself. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them as, as uh, good as I can. Probably make some more videos about it. For now, this was, I think, quite a lot. Um, thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my videos. Thank you guys. Bye bye.